Hey guys, it's Kina. Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be tackling the dreaded annoyance, insomnia. <laughs> So today's contender in Big Pharma versus Nature is z -Quil. Um, There's also melatonin, which actually is um, nature, but today's uh, big guy is z -Quil. So z -Quil is diphenhydramine, which if you remember from the allergy conversation, diphenhydramine is what's in Benadryl. They're basically the same. So it's kind of when you have the same medication, but you're marketing it for two different purposes. And we talked about in the allergy video how a side effect of diphenhydramine and taking Benadryl for allergy is that it makes you sleepy and drowsy and that you shouldn't operate heavy machinery and things like that. Well, you know, Big Pharma decided, well, if it makes you sleepy, and that's usually considered a side effect, why not market it as specifically something that makes people go to sleep? So that's what they did here with z -Quil. So I know like insomnia really does bother a lot of people. I get it every now and again. It can just be, you know, hormone changes or even um, stress and things like that. So I totally understand why you would want to take something. You've been laying in bed tossing and turning or um, just staring at the ceiling for a while and you're just like I gotta go to sleep you know I gotta get up in the morning so I totally understand however there are some considerations that you want to take with the diphenhydramine so we talked about a few of those like side effects and cautions in the allergy video but some that I want to touch on today are um, as far as cautions are one if you are supposed to be on like a low sodium diet, I believe the liquid form of diphenhydramine has a lot of sodium in it. So that's a precaution that you need to take and speak with your doctor and find out, you know, if it's okay for me to take that because I'm trying to keep my sodium levels low. The second is that diphenhydramine is not recommended for older people. Um, if you are over the age of, I mean, 65 or so, um, is you shouldn't really be using it except to manage like, severe allergic reactions. It just doesn't um, really work well with the geriatric community. But again, it's something that you want to speak with your doctor about um, at a little bit more length um, because that's important. You know, you want to make sure that it's safe. All you're trying to do is fall asleep. You don't want to start dealing with a bunch of uh, health concerns. Now, some of the side effects of diphenhydramine, and we talked about these in the allergy video, a dry mouth, dizziness, nausea, headache, things like that. And it's like, like I said before, the last thing we want to have to deal with when you're just already aggravated, you already are probably a little bit moody and you're tired and frustrated is all these other side effects. So you want to really be careful taking these uh, diphenhydramine products. Also, it says on the box non-habit forming, but you want to be careful with some of these sleep aid products because some of them are habit forming. You can become addicted to them, and even if not from a chemical perspective, just from a psychological perspective, that you get to a place where you just feel like you can't go to sleep if you don't take one. So you just want to be careful um, with these type of medications. Okay, so second, I wanna mention melatonin. Now, melatonin is considered a natural product and it is safe. You can have it in gummies or capsules or whatever. And it's trying to mimic the melatonin that's naturally produced in the body to help you fall asleep and regulate your sleep cycle. But some people do report side effects of melatonin. Some people actually have a advert, not adverse, a reverse response where they become more stimulated and they aren't still able to fall asleep. And then others report having things such as bad dreams or people who don't dream start to dream when they take melatonin. So you just want to be kind of careful of things like that. Also oversleeping, which really is the case with any of these sleep aids that if you take it too late into the night you may oversleep the next morning or you may just sleep longer than you intended to although it did help you fall asleep so that's just a caution with melatonin I know that's kind of a nature versus nature um, but you just want to be careful with those if that's something that you know concerns you or bothers you All right, so on the nature side of the ring, today we'll be, uh, be introduced to two more herbs, and that is valerian and passion flower. Uh, these two 
are really great and um, I'm really excited to kind of tell you guys about them because they're very safe and very effective. Okay, so let's start with Valerian. I'll show you guys if you can see it. Now, valerian is, this is the first root that we'll be talking about this time around. So valerian um, is a, a plant, but we'll be using the roots for medicinal purposes. Now, valerian is relaxant, it is anxiolytic, which just means it helps to calm anxiety. It also is sedative. So uh, valerian is great for when you're trying to get to sleep, and especially if you have anxious mind you know like if you're the type of person that when you get in bed and you lie down to go to sleep then all of the crazy brain just starts all the stuff that you forgot to do today and then you try to remember to do tomorrow <laughs> like all of that stuff well this uh, is a great option now since valerian is a root we would use this differently than we spoke about with the other products which were leaves and seeds uh, so you would need to do a decoction with um, with valerian and all that means is just to boil the roots in water so you still would be using maybe anywhere between maybe one and five teaspoons per cup of water and you just simmer that like in a pan instead of steeping it like a tea for the same like 10 to 20 minutes usually 20 minutes and then you strain off you know the roots that you don't want and then you drink that um, and you can do that three times a day so I'm sorry not three times a day. You can do it twice a day if it doesn't make you super drowsy and more for the relaxing properties, but really just at, at bedtime. So um, you could do this at bedtime, have a nice cup of relaxing tea, and it also can just help to start having, you know, a routine where you kind of tell the brain it's time to calm down, relax. You know, your tea becomes that kind of signaling that it's time to go to sleep. So you would drink it just like tea. You could sweeten it with honey or agave or whatever you want. But basically, like I said, the only difference is that instead of pouring the hot water over and letting it steep for 10 to 20 minutes, you're gonna actually simmer these roots in a pot for those 20 minutes. Um, but that's really the gist of valerian. It is really popular with people in the herbal community because it is so effective. Now I would say make sure that you don't take with any other sleep inducing medication. So if you already took something but you haven't fallen asleep, like maybe that melatonin or maybe even, you know, something like this z you really don't want to start to combine, you know, and that's anything, any herbs, any medications for sleep because they can have a compound effect and now, you know, you're sleeping too deeply, you're messing up your sleep cycle, things like that. But that is really the only caution with valerian. It is um, regarded as very safe. So it's important um, to, you know, do your research, but obviously valerian is a really good option. Um, it also is antispasmodic, which uh, most people don't really think about as something for going to sleep, but if you have um, period cramps or maybe like muscle cramps of any kind that also help keep you awake at night, that it's just an all around good option for that as well because it'll calm not just the mind, but also those muscles. Okay, so our second herb is actually one of my favorite flowers to even look at. It's beautiful, and it's the passion flower or Passiflora incarnata, which is its um, botanical name. I love passion flower. It's, it's beautiful and it smells good, but it's also a powerful medicinal herb. Now, passion flower is sedative as well, and it's tranquilizing or hypnotic, whichever word that you want to use, which just means induces sleep. So this one is specifically indicated as something that helps you go to sleep and not just that, you know, it'll make you calm enough to fall asleep. This particular herb is specifically indicated, excuse me, for being able to fall asleep. So you want to be able to use this. This one, we're going to be using the leaves. So this one you can do in a standard infusion, which just means tea, or you can do either one of these in a tincture as well. As we talked about, you know, tinctures are made with alcohol and then you take them sublingually. So the passion flower, like I said, it's, um, it's very powerful. It's also anxiolytic. So like I said, if you have anxiety induced insomnia, cause the world is crazy right now and you know, just day to day things, it's another one that will help you calm the mind and also be able to fall asleep and get you back on that sleep rhythm. Now, like I said, if you take it in an 
infusion, then you would do like one to two teaspoons per cup of water, let it steep for 15, 20 minutes, and then you drink this in bedtime. And usually within 20 to 30 minutes, you've fallen asleep. So you don't wanna take it like way before bedtime. Um, but right as you're settling down, like I said, creating that good sleep routine, turning the body off, turning the phone off, and things like that, um, this will definitely assist you. Now, passion flower may be contraindicated, as we talked about before, that means doesn't go well with or may not interact well with, but it's, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's contraindicated with uh, MAO inhibitors. So if you're on that type of medication, you wanna speak with a doctor before uh, taking passion flower. It's kind of like a, it may be, but you know, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So speak with your doctor if you take MAO inhibitors and just ask, hey, you know, what are your thoughts? on taking passion flower. A uh, passion flower also should not be taken in high doses in pregnancy. I don't know that I would say um, avoid it altogether because it can be taken safely and sometimes the hormonal change of pregnancy can induce some insomnia. But again, I was talking to my OB and just you know let them know my intention, but also it's in high doses that you wanna be more cautious about. So if you're taking you know that one teaspoon per cup, you're not gonna you know be messed up, you're not gonna bother anything but I am not a doctor and I am not your doctor so make sure you speak with them and just let them know that that's your intention that you're kind of looking for a natural remedy to help with that sleep disturbance so if you want to take this in tincture form like says sublingually then that would be um, maybe one to four milliliters sublingually if you want to make it yourself then we're talking about a one to five ratio of about 40 percent alcohol and the same thing with the valerian. You, you are more than welcome to take that as tincture as well. That one is about two and a half to five milliliters at bedtime under the tongue as well, which is about half to a full teaspoon. Except that if you're gonna make that one, it's the same one to five ratio herb to water, or herb to liquid, I should say, but you're gonna use 60% alcohol because that, remember, that one's a root. So when we're using roots and even seeds, rhizomes, then we're gonna to wanna to use more of a higher concentration of the alcohol to pull those constituents out. So in this corner, we've got dizziness, nausea, stomach pain, headache, um, and potential inability to take it if you are an elderly person. And then in this corner, we've got rest and calm and relaxation. And, um, you know, unless you're taking MAOs um, or um, you're pregnant, then those are considerations that you want to take. But like I said, that was a list versus one to two things. So, as I've said before, nature wins. I'm just saying, like, this is, <laughs> let's make this harder on ourselves, guys. Like nature versus big pharma, it feels like it's no contest, but it's just about learning what your options are and being able to get it. Now, um, I've seen in some teas, I think both Yogi and, um, what is it? Traditional medicinals. They do have like sleepy time teas and like a lot of companies have like a sleepy time bedtime tea. Um, they may have lavender in them as well. Lavender is not hypnotic or tranquilizing, meaning that it, helps you fall asleep but it is very calming and relaxing so it can help you kind of get out of the day-to-day -day, um you know just movement and help you calm down in order to fall asleep but it's not necessarily indicated to actually help you fall asleep like these two but some of the better quality teas will have these in there so you just turn around and read the back of the herb formulation and you will see valerian and passion flower and usually some lavender as well. Um, so just check those out. And if you do want bulk herbs to make those tinctures like that we talked about earlier, like I said, I use Star West Botanicals and uh, Frontier Co-op. Those are my top two favorites. They have a vast variety of um, different organic you know, herbs. Uh, so you wanna check those out. It's not sponsored and I don't have an affiliate link. Maybe I'll get one uh, one day. But those are two trusted sources to get those herbs um, that if you wanna get started with that, I wish you Good health and good sleep. <laughs> Cause I know it sucks to have insomnia. I get it all the time and then I have that crazy like roller coaster brain that doesn't want me to get any rest at night. So I definitely understand. Well, I hope this was really helpful for you guys. I hope it leads you to better rest and better sleep and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.